of a hurricane aid and in sport a football encounter between Jamaica and Saudi Arabia Arabia to go ahead as planned. I'm Ricardo Roberts and this is Caribbean in 10 for Monday, October 2nd. I'll be back with the details after the break. Town. There are two hotels that are adjacent to each other here. One is called Evergreen, and the sign used to be very visible there from the street on the wall. And the structure clearly has received some damage. I can see windows missing. Join us on this edition of Caribbean Passport as we discuss relief efforts for Hurricane Irma, preview the 2017 Barbados Food and Rum Festival, stop off in Antigua, and so much more, all next on this station. A political row has erupted in St. Kitts over aid to countries battered by hurricanes Irma and Maria, with the government and the main opposition trading words as to the sincerity behind the aid packages. The government announced an initial monetary contribution of 2.5 million EC dollars to support disaster relief efforts in Dominica, Antigua and Barbuda, the British Virgin Islands, Anguilla and St. Martin. It also announced the establishment of a short-term hurricane relief fund by adding a third investment option under the Citizenship by Investment Program that it said would help meet the estimated 140 million EC dollar bill, which it now faces to rehabilitate key public infrastructure which suffered damage during the two hurricanes. But opposition leader Dr. Denzel Douglas has described the government's action as unconscionable unfriendly, selfish, uncaring, and reprehensible, and aimed at undermining the efforts of Dominica and Antigua and Barbuda to recover from the hurricanes. The government said Douglas's statements were unfortunate and accused the opposition leader of shamelessly attempting to sully the country's image and sow division among Caribbean countries in the pursuit of narrow self-serving partisan political interests. Regional airline Liat has resumed limited operations to the hurricane-battered Dominica, St. Marte, and the British Virgin Islands. It said it will continue limited operations until October 7, carrying specific categories of passengers into the BVI. To enter Tortola in the BVI, a passenger must either be a resident of the British Overseas Territory, the holder of a valid work permit, or a property owner. Liat said only persons with proof of residency, citizenship, or authorization will enter or to enter will be allowed to connect. The airline will also only carry relief material as cargo into those destinations and no personal cargo is being accepted, at least for now. A 4.1 magnitude earthquake rattled several Caribbean islands today, but there were no re immediate reports of injuries or damage. According to the Seismic Research Center, the quake occurred at 8.08 .08 a.m., about 11 kilometers northwest of Kingstown, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and was felt in that country as well as St. Lucia and Grenada. Caribbean countries have in recent months been shaken by several tremors with experts warning the region to be prepared for a major quake. Demonstrators in Haiti took to the streets on Saturday for an opposition-backed protest against the government budget which many believe hurts the nation's poorest. 
Parliament approved the fiscal package that was has been presented by President Jovenel Moise last week, or last month rather. But he hinted at the possibility of reviewing some of those measures. During the weekend march, demonstrators threw stones and also built barricades off rocks and garbage to block traffic. Police were forced to use tear gas to contain the violence which was denounced by the political parties who organized the protest. Despite public backlash and fears about the human papillomavirus vaccine, Jamaica's health ministry said vaccines will be administered in schools across the island today. The vaccine is said to assist in preventing cervical cancer in Jamaica and will be targeting girls in grade 7. The government said that the move is a proactive measure to protect girls against cervical cancer. But the opposition shadow minister of health, Dr. Drayton Dayton Campbell, is calling for the urgent implementation of a public education program ahead of the administering of the HPG HPV vaccines. Now, according to Campbell, the vaccine has been linked to fainting spells and other side effects and may not be ad best administered in the school environment without appropriate measures in place for monitoring. But the health ministry is defending its plan to give HPV vaccine to grade 7 girls. Dr. Melody Ennis is the director of family health services in the Ministry of Health by the government because of the cancer burden. That is cervical cancer, the burden on the society. We have here in Jamaica over 300 cases with 185 deaths annually. In our population, the virus that caused cervical cancer is in excess of 50%. All parents who have children who entered grade 7 of this year were given a letter from the Ministry of Health in July when they collected their orientation packet. We, we, we continue on our public awareness and we have met, we have met, we have met, with, we started with the Ministry of Education, we have done all this, some no. of the NGOs, the private sector also, it's an inclusive process. Optional Stay with us, your midday sport is next. Welcome back. Thursday's friendly international between Jamaica and Saudi Arabia will go ahead as planned. Doubt has surrounded the fixture in Riyadh after failure by the Saudi Arabian Football Federation to submit on time an application to FIFA for the match to be played. However, the Jamaica Football Federation's Vice President Bruce Gaynor says the administrative issues have been dealt with. The Reggae Boys have been beaten, um, have beaten South Saudi Arabia once in three previous meetings, losing one and drawing one, but the two teams have not met in 18 years. Jamaica is expected to have a stern test with the Saudis already having qualified for the 2018 World Cup in Russia after finishing second to Japan in Group B of the Asian section of qualifiers. That's Caribbean in 10. Join us again at 6.30 for Caribbean Newsline. Good afternoon. <laughs>